So when our embassies and consulates are finally going to reopen? Well, watch this video and I'll tell you more. Hello everybody. So one of the most frequently asked questions that I've been getting since this whole crisis started, specifically for people that are stuck overseas, is when our consulates and embassies are going to reopen. In this video, I've got some good news that I can update you um, that we just learned about them today. So I'll let you know what's the process, what's going to happen, and a few other uh, tips to help people that are working with consulates that are, not, that are not yet open, what you can do. So make sure you watch the video to the end so I can give you all the tips you need. If you're here for the first time, make sure to subscribe to our channel Click this bell to be notified and uh, because we release videos every week and if you don't subscribe, you're not going to know when I go live and when new videos come out and also give us that big like to make sure that YouTube is going to show these videos to you and other people who are interested in this content. So once again, those of you who don't know me, I am Jacob Sapochnik, an immigration attorney located in San Diego, California. We represent clients in all 50 states. We work with clients pretty much all over the world and right now we have at least 25 embassies we are dealing with that people have cases with and we're able to share that information with you in this video keep you posted and so give you the most updated information so let's dive right in as you know um, we have a few issues that are happening so we've got people that are subject to certain bans so there's a list of countries that people are not able to enter the United States because they are from a certain country, right? So those bans are still in place. And those people who are, you know, and we've done videos about the country bans, those specific bans for countries, those specific people are still not able to come if they're listed on those particular, um, uh, on, the ban on the country bans. For example, people from Nigeria, from Iran, from, uh, from Libya, uh, those, are the early those are the early bans that started. And, and as you know, <clears throat> the whole point of, this, of these bans is that people that are in those countries are not able to attend visa interviews at those embassies because they are banned. Then we have the proclamations that started in April. So we have a proclamation that's, that banned certain individuals from coming to the United States for 60 days and then that proclamation was extended until December 31st. And among those people we have uh, DV lottery winners that are from all over the world that are stuck they're not able to come because they are subject to the ban. Those spouses of green card holders that are overseas, they're not able to come, they're stuck. So that's the ban. But while these bans were taking place, the embassies were also shut down because of the whole situation with COVID-19. So the embassies themselves were shut down to the public for safety of the public, for safety of the employees. Those embassies we're shut down and we're waiting for information for those embassies to reopen. Or guess what? We had an announcement uh, from the State Department and um, there was also posted on the Twitter account and I'll, and I'll read that to you right now, uh, what it says. In the beginning of July 15, U.S. embassies and consulates may begin the phased resumption of routine visa services depending on local conditions. Please monitor the embassy consulate website for the status of their services. So it looks like it's official that as, as of July 15, many, many consulates will start reopening, will start phases. There's going to be different phases. Our understanding is that they're going to start rescheduling first appointments that were canceled as COVID-19 started. So there are people that were already scheduled for appointments. Like for example, we have quite a few clients on K-1 visas and also CR1 marriage cases that were supposed to attend interviews in March, late March, in April, and those interviews who were already scheduled, they already had a date, they were rescheduled, they were canceled at, at, that, at that point. So based on these phases, um, they're going to start rescheduling those interviews that already had dates before. We believe that those are going to be the first to come to get their interviews back. So if you had interviews already scheduled in March and in April, you're going to be able to get those interviews right now. A lot of those people were DV lottery winners that were scheduled already and they were canceled because of the ban. Those people are still not going to be able to go and get their interviews and I know we've done a video about that and I know there's a litigation currently pending to address those, those concerns for those DV lottery winners. 
Um, but unfortunately, even when the consulates are going to reopen, those people are not going to be able to attend those interviews. So, but anybody else, if you have um, a visa appointment for an E2, um, for, for, uh, for a marriage case, for a K-1 visa, those embassies are going to be reopening in phases depending on their country conditions. So a lot of, country, a lot of uh, European countries are already reopening, like Germany, um, like London, like France. We have um, people already being scheduled for appointments for late July and August from our office that we know personally, and I know other attorneys are getting their interviews as well. And of course, it was confirmed by the State Department that they're already starting in July 15. However, even before this announcement, what we noticed is that a lot of embassies and consulates or around the world are accommodating expedited requests for a variety of reasons. So you don't have to have a very extreme situation, it seems so. Again, there's no policy about it, but we have a lot of people in our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group with 6,000 members, more than 6,000 members, and we ask them to post different uh, uh, experiences and timelines. And based on my clients and what I've seen in the group, we see that a lot of embassies and consulates are accommodating expedited requests for appointments for mere requests for, for example, like just because of a separation, of a family separation, they'll do it. And let me read you an example of a recent uh, a summary of a case from one of our group members that described what happened to her at a particular embassy. And you can see how the, this particular embassy uh, gave her the appointment, an expedited appointment, even before their reopening. So let me read you this. So in this case, um, this person um, got her I-130 approved in, um, in, in February, MVC approval in May, the expedited was sent in June when no appointments were available, and the expedited was approved on the 10th of June, which was only, which was only six days after. This is what she said. This was in the consulate of Vienna, which again confirms what we said, that Europe is reopening, and those consulates are being very, very flexible. And reason for the expedited, she emailed the embassy directly and told them that she hadn't seen her husband since last January, and it was taking a toll on her mentally and emotionally. That's all she said. The embassy was kind enough to respond within 24 hours and told her to submit an expedited request, and her attorney did that, and basically she used the same proof no documents requested for proof or anything like that, just her request. Interview basically took place uh, within a week. So, and, and we've seen similar experiences with an embassy in Spain, with an embassy, with the embassy in London, as well as one incident with the U.S. Embassy in Manila. And again, I think that the consulates also realize that people are waiting, families are being um, torn apart, and they, if somebody will request an expedite it and make an effort to, to go through the channels, it's worth to try it. So again, I know that they're reopening and I know it's, it's gonna be in phases, but if you're in an embassy that still is not gonna open because of country conditions are still difficult, I would highly recommend to try and file an expedite request. And again, the, the request has a particular format, but as you can see from this example, they don't require you to, to be an exceptional case. If you try to make an effort and file a request for an expedite because it's really been almost more than a year that you haven't seen your family or because there are minor kids that haven't seen their parents, one parent is here, another parent is in another country, there can be many reasons, a medical condition that is, is more than, 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 than regular. I would highly, highly recommend to be in touch with the consulate. Even if, even if they refuse to grant the expedited, at least you open a communication channel with the consulate. And when they do reopen, you'll be the first one to be notified because you're already in communication with them. Like, just like the State Department said, be in touch with the consulate. They're okay with you emailing them as long as you do it in a respectful way and not bombard them with questions. If you do an expedite, we just want to know what, where, what the status of your case or when they're going to reopen, I highly recommend to be very proactive. Whether you have an attorney or not, make sure you do so. So, once again, just to summarize, it seems that consulates and embassies are going to be reopening as of July 15th in different phases. Again, it's important to understand the country conditions where they are, and so you have to monitor that and see um, with your consulate what is happening in the country, if they are um, in a lockdown or lockdown, and, and again, 
I, I cannot emphasize that more. Be in touch with the consulate. And if you're in a country where you don't have an opportunity for the consulate to reopen, try to request an expedited request because like I said, everybody's anxious, everybody's waiting, and you have to make the most out of the situation and try to be very proactive and follow up because if you don't, nothing is gonna happen. So once again, hopefully this information was helpful. Once again, if you're here for the first time, please subscribe to our channel, click that like so we can, uh, the YouTube can share this video with others. And let me know in the comments, because I know that after this video, you're gonna have questions, you have concerns. Let me know in the comments what else you wanna know, and, I'm, and I promise I'll make videos on that as well. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting. I'm here for you, and I'll see you on our next video.